Welcome to the latest episode of Rain's Essential Geopolitics Podcast. I'm Emily Donahue. Two recent attacks against Abu Dhabi have raised both security and geopolitical risk concerns. What are they? Here with answers is Ryan Bow, Rain Middle East and North Africa analyst. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for having me, Emily. So let's talk about these. What happened? So we had a, a series of attacks on Abu Dhabi. They, the, the first and second ones, one happened on the uh, January 17th and the other happened about a week later. And these were drone and ballistic missile and cruise missile attacks on the capital of the United Arab Emirates. The first attack was a very significant attack. It ended up killing three uh, civilians, foreign workers in the industrial area of Abu Dhabi, even as it set out targets at the uh, the Abu Dhabi airport and, and probably other locations as well. The second attack was smaller, but appeared to be aimed at what's uh, called the Al Dafra Air Base outside of Abu Dhabi, which hosts uh, United States troops that are based out of the region. Um, so we have these two attacks, and they are the first time in Emirati history that they have come under a ballistic missile threat, a direct attack by an adversary. And, and so in that sense, it's a significant piercing of the illusion that the Emiratis were immune to all of the geopolitical tension in the region. Now, geographically, the Emiratis have long sat within the rocket and missile range of its regional adversary, Iran. But uh, besides a few attacks on shipping off the Emirati coast, even with all of this turbulence around Iran and its nuclear program and its its behavior activities where it's it's supporting militias in various countries, the Emirates always felt like they were a place where this sort of thing didn't happen. It, it, the Middle East is seen as a unstable region, but the Emirates felt like a, a sea of cal- an island of calm in this sea of chaos. Well, Ryan, let's talk about the UAE's role in Yemen specifically. Right. So the Emiratis have been involved in Yemen since the Saudi-led intervention in 2015. And the Emiratis have always been playing something of a double game. They are part of the Saudi-led coalition to push the Houthi militant movement out of power, try to restore the internationally recognized government uh, to full control over the country. But even as that's happening, the Emiratis have also been building up these regional proxies and militias uh, like the Southern Transitional Council and the Giants Brigade, amongst others, uh, that are trying to be allies of the UAE in Yemen and projecting Emirati influence permanently in that country. And so the Emiratis have never been willing to put the skin in the game to push the Houthis back into the north, to push them out of power. Rather, what the Emiratis have been focused in on, focused on is building up these allies and using the territory that they control to establish military bases and to experiment with some economic investments in the southern part of Yemen. What are the business risks associated with what's going on there? Well, there's several dimensions here. The the first is aviation. Uh, These rockets and drones came very close to the Abu Dhabi airport, which is supposed to, again, be it's supposed to be a secure airport. It's supposed to be a safe place to land. And there's always a chance that some of these missiles or drones accidentally collide with civilian aircraft or that the air defenses that are being used cause some sort of aviation mishap. It doesn't seem likely at the moment that the Houthis would risk shooting down civilian airliners, but that is also a a potential risk now. So aviation is now suddenly no longer as certain going through the UAE, which is a major transport hub of both civilian and uh, goods, huge amounts of civilians and goods transit through the UAE. Um, it's no longer safe. Um, the other aspect of business of risks is that many people go to work and to invest in the UAE because it's a place where they just don't have to think about the geopolitical risks of the Middle East. It's, it's an energy rich and oil rich country, especially Abu Dhabi is oil rich. Um, and they don't feel like they have to worry about, say, some of the risks in Iraq or, or even in Saudi Arabia, where things like terrorism and Houthi attacks kind of plague Saudi Arabia's business reputation. Uh, now that's suddenly no longer there. Uh, while Emirati air defenses are quite capable, they're far from perfect. Uh, no air defense system is perfect. And now when people are thinking about doing business in the UAE or if they're thinking about moving there to work, uh, they have to take into account the notion that they may come under missile or rocket fire or drone attack. And, and that's just a new part of, of what the lifestyle means out there. Um, and that will deter some people from wanting to move out there. And it is a, uh, or even to invest out there because they simply don't want to deal with that instability. Um, and this is a particularly notable because the Emirates is approximately 85, 90% 
uh, foreigners. So they very much need people to be convinced that it's a safe place to live and work for them to achieve their economic development program. And then to geopolitical risk, let's talk a little bit about what this attack or the situation means for perhaps the Iran nuclear talks or UAE Iranian outreach. That's right. So there's uh, the Houthis are an ally of the Iranians, but they're not quite a proxy, meaning that the Houthis will act in their own interest. They will take support from the Iranians. They'll often do things in conjunction with the Iranians. But not every single Houthi action has to be seen through the lens of this is something that Iran is doing or wants. Um, it's not clear whether or not the Iranians pushed for these attacks or greenlit them or even opposed them. Uh, what is clear is that the Emiratis and the Americans are not blaming the Iranians for these attacks, even though they probably wouldn't be possible without Iranian support. Iran provides substantial technological and material support to the Houthis, especially for its drones and, and ballistic missiles. Um, the fact that the UAE and the United States aren't blaming the Iranians means that for the moment, they're not going to be affecting the U.S.-Iran nuclear talks. They're not going to be creating a new front between the United States and the Iranians. And it's not going to necessarily sabotage the Emirati-Iranian outreach, where the Emiratis are trying to improve relations with the uh, the Iranians, in, in part because they expect that, uh, uh, in part because they're, they're worried that escalation with the Iranians would be an even bigger geopolitical risk to their economic development program. Uh, so for the moment, the fact that the Emiratis and the Americans are not going after the Iranians over this means that the risks of escalation are limited and that that geopolitical risk that Iran is going to become uh, starting to be carrying out a proxy campaign in the UAE that drags in the U.S., uh, that's limited at the moment. But that is something that we're keeping in mind, especially if the Houthis keep these attacks going. If one of them causes significant civilian casualties, especially casualties amongst Westerners or Americans, uh, if it hits the airbase at uh, Al-Dafra or any of the other facilities the United States military uses, this is where we can see the situation start to escalate and include more of an Iranian component. Uh, in addition, if the Iran nuclear talks completely fail, if we see a nuclear escalation by the Iranians and we move into a greater military scenario between the United States and Iran or Israel and Iran, that's where we can see the Emiratis uh, being dragged in. They're now clearly signaled as a, as a front line that could emerge between Iran and its regional adversaries. But at least at the moment, the Americans and the Emiratis are trying to limit the blame so that that isn't a situation they have to deal with right now. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Emily. Ryan Bowl is a Middle East and North Africa analyst at Rain. You can stay ahead of the news with the latest geopolitical events and analysis of the Middle East. Subscribe to Worldview today. Right now, you can get four weeks of Worldview for a dollar. Check out the details at stratfor.com. That's stratfor.com. I'm Emily Donahue. Thanks for listening.